Hi, we're here today with Ed Humes. Ed, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Well, I'm an author and journalist. I have been uh, started out as a newspaper reporter for about 10 years of my career. Uh, several different papers covered the courts, environment and science, and the military were the things I specialized in. And I uh, had the opportunity to take a temporary leave to, to write my first book. And it became a not so temporary leave because I've been doing that for quite a while now. That's remarkable. I think that's probably the dream of every writer. Yeah, well, you know, it has some advantages because you're, you set your own schedule. Uh, but, you know, when you're uh, living book to book, it's also you're singing for your supper uh, every time uh, uh, that you uh, come up with an idea and, and say, I want to do this. That's absolutely true. Can you tell us a little bit, what was your first book? What's your latest? My first book was uh, called Buried Secrets, uh, which I've le since learned any crime book could be called that because it's <laughs> such a great title. Uh, but that was set on the border with Mexico and the U.S. and it concerned the kidnapping of a um, student who was on spring break uh, and it implicated very high officials in Mexico. There's turf battles between the DEA and customs to see who was going to solve the crime. There was devil worship and uh, cult and drug smuggling. It kind of had so much going on that uh, it needed a book to tell the story. Wow. Had you been reporting on that or was it something you were interested in? That was what I uh, took the, my leave to write about. My publisher said, we need somebody to do this book. You've covered the courthouse. You covered the Night Stalker murders. Not the original Night Stalker, the, okay. the one that we ended up calling the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez. And um, we think you'd be perfect for this. And I was ready to, to dig in. and. It was, it was my first experience writing narrative length um, um, crime stories where I was going for the feel of a novel, but it, you know, it's a true story and it was larger issues as well as the, the lurid crime stuff and so it had it all. Wow. What was that like? How did you make the transition? Uh, it was a learning experience. I mean, the interview skills, the research skills all are directly applicable, but um, you, you need to, I realized if, if you want to build a character, you need to ask absurdly extensive and personal questions of people, and it's shocking how many people say, yeah, I'll tell you that, you know, um, in order to recreate a scene, to understand the motivations of characters, both the, the good guys and the bad guys. Um, I talked to everybody. Um, wow. Wow, that's amazing. Nonpartisan. Was there anything very surprising about it? About the first book? Yeah. Just, uh, many things. Uh, the. Um, this uh, Miami-born um, Cuban-American um, uh, person named Adolfo Constanzo was, became a devotee of some very dark, magical religions. And wow. the people, he claimed he could, could predict the future, could ensure criminal enterprises would never be caught. And he had people as high as the uh, um, chief of Interpol for Mexico among his followers, wow. and giving him information, which you know, enabled him to, you know, Guaranteed uh, he could elude uh, capture for his criminal enterprises because he had such highly placed adherents. That's unbelievable. So now you've written 15 books, I think? Yes. 15. So what's the latest? Well, my most recent book is called Burned. And it's, it's a return to true crime writing. I, 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 after about five or six books, I, uh, I went into some different things, environment, science. Uh, I wrote a book about the modern day Scopes monkey trial uh, that was in Pennsylvania a few years back, which was fascinating. So I had to learn how to write intelligently about evolutionary biology, which you know doesn't come in the normal <laughs> journalistic training. Uh, but um, Burned is a crime story. It's a 1989 fire, uh, fatal fire in Los Angeles in which um, three children were burned to death, young children. Uh, uh, and um, the sur only survivor was their mother who, who said she couldn't get to them through the flames. Oh. Uh, and it was initially thought to be an accident, but um, later, uh, and a later investigation um, determined that it was arson and that it was murder by fire. Wow. Uh, and she's been in prison since the early 1990s. Uh, and this story, my part of the story begins recently when uh, the California Innocence Project challenged the, the conviction and presented some uh, expert review of the science used then, which said, well, this actually isn't science. They were just making this stuff up. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that is a huge problem with many arson cases from that era. Um, things that were done in good faith, um, th the forensics was just wrong. It was based on lore and belief rather than any kind of actual scientific research. And um, So part of the book is also about 
forensic science and the and the cor the correcting role that DNA uh, science has the first sci truly science based laboratory originated forensic technology and the correction it's applied to the system for many of the more uh, venerable and less scientific forensic practices so. Uh, Wow. That's kind of part of the reason why I'm here. Though. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a fascinating story, and it makes sense why you would want to come to Ishii. It's your first year, correct? Yes. Yeah, so what have you thought so far? Well, I've been fascinating. What drew me here is the book I'm working on now that won't be out until next year. Um, it's one of the genetic genealogy uh, cases that uh, occurred um, in the immediate aftermath of the Golden State Killer. This is one that's already been tried and has a result, uh, based in Washington. And it's, it's got everything a journalist wants in a story. You have uh, a poignant human story, uh, fascinating uh, uh, hero in the form of the cold case detective who worked on this case forever, um, uh, and then the genetic genealogy component. I came to that not because of the murder, but I was already interested in the subject of um, the DNA, family DNA testing craze, and how that was yes. leading to all kinds of unintended results. Uh, this was before any any use of it in a criminal case, I, and I was already sold. I had, but I needed to find a way to tell the story, and then you know everybody's aware of what yes. happened next. Yeah. Uh, and so that's that's the book I'm working on now. And this conference has been super helpful in terms of meeting people who are in the thick of things, who are figuring out the policies moving forward. Uh, I met what may be the only. Uh, well, now former, but head of a crime, state crime lab, who also was an accomplished genealogist. I think she's the only one. Uh, maybe people out there can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'd like to hear if there's others. <laughs> you know, it has been an evolution. Uh, familial DNA uh, was, we've been talking about that for years. Genetic genealogy, the last couple of years, has just exploded. Um, how did you pick the story that you're working on now out of the many stories out there? What's your process? You know, it's the conceit of every writer. If I'm interested, surely everybody will be interested. <laughs> right. in, uh, you always look for a good story. And for me, writing nonfiction, and I think it's true of many fiction writers too. They want you want a compelling character uh, in in uniquely um, uh, fascinating circumstances, uh, and that that crime just happens to be something that not only people are interested in reading about or watching and, and, uh, or hearing podcasts about, it's kind of exp interest has exploded in that, but there's a reason because, uh, and I know this from being a courthouse reporter back in, in my newspaper days, virtually any story, any issue, any conflict that's important to society eventually finds its way into the courtroom. It's always a gold mine for, for storytellers, uh, and that's, I'm, I'm usually looking for for stories that have all those elements, bring them together, the big issue and the human context, the human drama. Yeah. Can you tell us what the case is? Or do you want oh, yeah. to keep well, that? Oh, yeah. Well, it's everybody here knows about it. Okay. It's the, William, uh, the, the, the prosecution of William Tal Talbot in um, Sonomish County, Washington, uh, which has had a number of these uh, genealogical solved cold case crimes uh, because there just happens to be one detective there with with uh, with gumption and foresight and no funding or anything else but he's found ways to um, to get it done and use the expertise that's developing and it's out there to um, to make arrests in these cases uh, and th that alone piques my interest and yeah. he's, he's yes. an interesting man and the the families of the victims, the, um, the Von Kullenberg family and the Cook family from, Van from um, Victoria, Canada. I've met all of them and spent time with them. And can you imagine 32 years ago, their, their children uh, take a, a trip to Seattle, to the big city for just one overnight and never return? And- I can't, yeah. And then 30 years later, uh, suddenly it's all back in a very immediate and visceral way when they're told they get a phone call and say guess what you know we finally made and that, an arrest in the case and there really has been the power of genetic genealogy as we've seen it so far i mean we have a number of people you know speaking or attending here barbara Ray venter uh, colleen fitzgerald margaret press uh, cc moore yes. it's it's everybody wants to talk about it yeah so um i a deep dive would be very interesting to read when will it be out uh, next year.
next year. Um, Great. Finishing it before the end of the year. That's wonderful. Yeah. Any, My editors uh, told me so. so any that's, <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> any um, bits of wisdom that you've you're going to use that you took from the conference so far? Oh, quite a bit. Yeah. Well, I, I, you mentioned Barbara Raven. I had a wonderful conversation with her, and I think we'll have some more in the future. She's um, so yes, knowledgeable, she so interesting, delightful, and uh, C.C. Moore has also been really open and, and terrific. Uh, the, Jane, the, um, the Doe Project yeah. folks. Uh, they have they have great stories to tell, and, and there's a, a surfeit of, of things that I've learned. I, you know, I have, I have a, an abundance of riches I need to sort through to to find um, all the right material to include. Well, we're, it's, a, it's a nice problem to have. It is a good problem to have, and we're so happy you were able to attend. It may be too early, but what's next for you then? Well, that is still next. I can't, okay. I can't <laughs> yeah, it's too early. Uh, I'm always looking for the next uh, the next good idea, though. But that kind of gets filed away until the. I was still working on Burned when when this was unfolding, and I wanted knew I wanted to to pursue this. So <laughs> added spur to get that one done. <laughs> well, maybe you'll have to come back next year, and we'll have some more ideas for you. That'd be great. <laughs> okay, that sounds wonderful. Thank you so much for taking time out. We My really pleasure. appreciate it.